What is up my maintenance brothers and sisters? I am Jack Schwent, the maintenance supervisor here at Oak Tree Village in Portage, Indiana. Today I got a cool video for you. We are gonna be talking about how to install heat tape properly, the importance it has on protecting our homes, as well as some preventative maintenance surrounding it. I hope that by the end of this video, you guys have learned something new and you've also got the confidence to tackle this task on your own. Let's head into the shop. All right, welcome to the shop. Before we get started today, I wanna to talk about some safety measures we need to take. Uh, proper PPE that you should be wearing at the minimum is clear eye protection and you want to make sure that you have proper lighting, whether that's a headband or even a fog lamp underneath the home. In order to change out heat tape, you are going to be under a home, so you need it to be well lit, you want to protect your eyes, but you also want to be aware of your surroundings. Make sure that you're wearing long sleeves, long pants, take your time, don't be running around under the home. Remember, heat tape doesn't just protect our assets, it's gonna protect you from having to come out in sub-zero weather and deal with a freeze up or a break. So always be prompt and be prepared. All right, next let's talk about some preventative maintenance. First being the home itself. You want all of your skirting, no gaps, no holes, and installed correctly. Uh, the belly underneath your home. Make sure there's no rips or tears or insulation falling through. Ultimately, if the bottom side of your home is sealed properly, then your heat tape is going to be able to do the job it was designed to do. Uh, some preventative maintenance for the heat tape uh, itself is going to be in the spring. Make sure to unplug all of your heat tape. Uh, you don't need to be heating your water lines through the summer. That's also going to prolong the life of your heat tape. And then in the fall, come back and plug all of the heat tapes back in. Make sure that your controller is lighting up and make sure it's getting warm at both ends. So that way you can ensure no freeze ups over the winter. Now when it comes to doing the actual task, you're not going to need a ton of items. You're going to need 3 inch foil backed insulation, you're going to need tube insulation, some electrical tape, heat tape, the controller for your heat tape, a couple small tools, you got wire cutter, Stanley knife, and a Phillips head screwdriver. And then just a couple little tips that I would suggest is look up the manufacturer's data sheet for your heat tape. It's going to help you know the spacing you should have as well as the length you should have for your heat tape based on a given length of the pipe. And then last thing would be have a freeze up bucket. Be prepared if you do worst case get that call. Um, I've got a heat gun in there, some extra tools, some extra heat tape, um, just in case I do get that call. But at this point, you've got everything you need and you're ready to install your new heat tape. So let's dive in. Step one, we are simply going to be removing all of our old insulation and old heat tape from our water line. Get that out of there, clean up the water line, make sure there's no tape. You want to be left with bare exposed pipe. Get that old heat tape out of there, get that old insulation out of there. Nice and clean, you're ready to move on to step two. Step two, we are going to be actually installing the wire for our new heat tape. Uh, you want to be starting this where your pipe goes up and into the hole. Be sure to leave yourself extra length so that you have room to get your controller to that outlet under the home that you will be plugging in. You're going to start with some tape, electrical tape around your heat tape. Lots of tape. <laughs> All right. And then again, I'm using a small section, small section of wire, so it's going to be a little bit easier for me here. Uh, when you're under the home doing this, I suggest keeping the wire on the roll and using that roll to guide you as you spiral your tape and run it down your water pipe. It's still going to want to fight you. Be patient with it. And then also, a little tip here would be to make sure that you're taping it every couple feet to hold it in place and then you're not fighting it so much. All right, once you've got it spiraled to spec, remember I talked about the data plates from the manufacturer, make sure that you're doing the correct spiral length as well as however it's related to your uh, size of your pipe, uh, your average low temperature, and also the length of your pipe. At the very end here, once we've done it to our entire pipe, we're down by the crock. You want to bring your wire back up and out of your crock, okay? You don't want that sitting down in there. We don't want it collected moisture or sitting in water even worse. So once you're up and out of the pipe, we're ready to install our end cap. 
you're gonna pull this wire mesh down. Just show you a little better here. This wire mesh is actually your ground wire. So you're gonna wrap it around itself. Try not to poke yourself with those little wires too much here. Get it nice and clean like so. Then your end cap. You don't wanna just shove it all the way down. Um, there's a little bit of silicone gel in there that actually seals this wire. If you push it all the way down, you're displacing all that gel and then your ends are actually still exposed. So go about two thirds, three quarter. Just do your best, put your thumb there, maybe not to uh, shove it all the way in. Okay, out of the pipe, looking good. You've run your tape for your heat tape. All right, step three, we are going to be insulating our pipe. Uh, so we've got our tube insulation and we've also got our three inch foil backed insulation. First thing you want to do is go to all your bulky items, I'm going to call them, your shutoffs, your water meter, um, and tape them with this three inch insulation. What that allows you to do is insulate your shutoffs as well as your meter. You can still read your meter because you're not covering the top of it, and you can still shut off your shutoffs if need be down the road. So we're going to throw a little tape on there just to hold it in place. Once we've done the three inch around all of our bulky items, then we're gonna move around to our tube insulation. Little suggestion here, uh, right now I've got half inch PEX pipe with obviously the heat tape wire. If I bought half inch tube insulation, I would be fighting to get this insulation on. So this is actually three quarter that's gonna be going around this. I would always suggest go a quarter up. So if you have three quarter pipe, grab inch, one inch insulation. That way you're not fighting it to get it on. Once you've installed all your tubing, make sure that your tubing joints, if you have two pieces coming together, which you will, make sure you tape these joints. You don't want an exposure here because then it's just gonna let all the heat tape out. As well as when you get to your three inch insulation that you've already done, you wanna make sure to tape these joints as well. Tape them to the foil back insulation. If these aren't sealing great, um, this is the self sealing. You just pull this plastic, it'll seal on itself. Just revert back to the electrical tape. Make sure that you're putting a nice jacket on your newly installed heat tape. Step four, we are gonna be installing our heat tape controller. Uh, this is gonna come in a pack with your end cap. It's also gonna come with, I believe, a zip tie and some instruction. First thing we have to do is unscrew these two screws here to open up our controller. Once you've got those unscrewed, Sometimes they'll stay in, but just to be safe, I would take them all the way out and put them in a safe place so you don't lose them. Inside, we're looking at two penetrating screws here that penetrate the wire. We're also looking at a ground bar. That outside wire mesh, that ground wire that we talked about, needs to be sitting on there. So before we can put the wire in, we've got to back out these penetrating screws. Not all the way, but enough to where the wire can get in. We are going to grab our beginning of the heat tape. Again, we're by the outlet here. We're gonna pull back some of that ground wire, the wire mesh, and then we are going to send it down and into that hole there. Make sure that you push it all the way until you can see it at the back here. I'm not sure if we can get that on film, but you wanna make sure you can see it back there. And then I like to bunch up this ground wire, nice and neat, onto the ground bar. And we can put our penetrating screws down, tighten those up, grab our wire. And we're gonna grab those two screws that we put in a safe spot and close the controller back up. Nice and tight, this is holding everything together and it's also making sure that that ground bar is touching the ground wire on the tape. Once you've got it secured, you have successfully installed your controller. Step five and our last step, which is simply testing our work. At this point, we are going to plug our controller up and into the outlet under the home. You wanna make sure this light right here illuminates 
and that means you've got power to your controller. At this point, give it a couple minutes, let the heat tape warm up, come on back, use your hand to test at the controller for warmth. Make sure you've got warmth there. Don't open up your nice new insulation. Go all the way down to the end. Out of your crock, you have your end cap coming out. Test here for warmth. And as long as you've got warmth at the end, warmth at the beginning, you have just successfully installed new heat tape on your water line. Great job. All right, yes heads. Today we talked about how to properly and safely install heat tape under a home, as well as some preventative maintenance we can do to ensure that we have a freeze-free winter. I hope that you guys did learn something today. I'm sure I missed something. My email is down in the description below. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions regarding anything in this video, or maybe something I missed. And as always, you guys, plan, execute, measure, and adjust. We'll catch you in the next one.